Hello folks, welcome back to my kitchen. My name is Emily, the registered dietitian here at Harvest Market. And I'm making a really, really delicious recipe this week, my meatball subs. I'm super excited to share this one with you. These are such good meatballs. They're fantastic. And really they're all purpose. So this is a great meatball recipe. You can use them obviously for like spaghetti and meatballs. But we're doing something a little bit different and we're gonna be doing a meatball sub. So, so good. So let's go ahead and start by making our meatballs. So first thing that we're gonna need to do is put our meat in a mixing bowl. So just drop the meat right in there into the mixing bowl. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, the panko mix. So this has some really finely grated um, real Parmesan cheese with a little bit of salt, pepper, and dried oregano. So that is it, and that's all going in there. And some panko, obviously. Then we have, um, and it really doesn't matter what order you do these in, they're all going in the same bowl. So it really doesn't matter. So then I have um, half of a small onion. I'm just gonna take the outside peel off. And now I'm gonna grate this just because I want it really, really small. Um, if you don't have a box grater or you don't feel like pulling it out, totally fine. Just make sure that you really, really, really run your knife through it really, really well. So the reason why we're doing this is because if our onion is in really big chunks, then it tends to make our meatballs fall apart. So if you've ever had that issue, if you're making um, even like a meatloaf or anything with ground meat kind of put together like that. If you have any big hunks of things, any especially vegetables, because they'll leach um, water, liquid when they cook, it'll just kind of fall apart. So I like to use a box grater for my onion to make sure that it's just minced up really fine. It's almost kind of like an onion mush. It doesn't sound great, but it works really, really well for the meatballs. Just be careful of your fingers. So when I get to kind of like the last little part, I'll usually just kind of chop that up myself because I don't want my fingers to be grated into my meatballs as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna take that big part. I just wanna make sure that I get all the onion. And you can see that, I mean, this is just like, it's kind of like an onion paste of sorts. So I'm just gonna scrape everything off of here. It just works really, really well. If you have a, something similar, a food chopper, something, um, just run your, run your onion through there. Okay, all this going right into the bowl. Okay, then we're gonna do our garlic. Fresh garlic is key for really good meatballs. Um, so is fresh herbs. And just a little parsley goes a long way. So again, we wanna mince this up really, really good. You can use a microplane for the garlic if you really want to. You don't have to though. Again, the only way we're gonna get better at chopping and mincing is by practicing. But I won't judge if you wanna use a garlic press here. Coarse nuts, as long as you're using fresh garlic. Okay, looks good to me. Right in the bowl. Okay, then we're gonna mince up our parsley. Love, 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 love fresh herbs in this. So good. Give it a good mince. And the nice bright pop of color doesn't hurt either. Okay. Then we're gonna put in our seasoning cup. And the seasoning cup has a couple things in it. It has um, a little bit of olive oil to give kind of a richness. It'll help with browning um, and flavor. And we have a little bit of red wine vinegar, which many of you know um, is my signature ingredient in pretty much anything. We need that little bit of acidity um, to add that brightness and lightness and round out the flavor. We also have a little bit of the Worcestershire. So, um, however you pronounce it, it's good. And it adds a salty umami punch. So that kind of meaty, really savory bite that just gives that next level depth of flavor um, to our meatballs. 
And then last but not least, you're gonna add your own egg into here. So this just helps um, act as a binder to really kind of glue everything together. So when the proteins and the egg cook, um, it is going to just bind everything together. So we just need one, I'm doing a two person. So we just need one of those here. Okay, so now I'm gonna put on some gloves because we're gonna get our hands messy. And I have them. Do you need gloves? Absolutely not. But sometimes it's nice when we're doing something like this. So I do have my sheet pan ready. Um, it is right off to the side here. And I have it lined with parchment. I really, really love to use parchment paper um, when we're cooking, when we're baking with things because it doesn't burn. Um, and so you can obviously use foil if you want to or just the sheet pan. Um, in which case you'll definitely want to give a good spray with cooking spray so it doesn't stick. But if you're using parchment, you don't have to do anything. Um, just line, line your sheet pan right here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and scooch this off to the side because I don't need it anymore. Okay. And I've got my sheet pan. And then we're just gonna get right in here and I'm just gonna kind of fold everything together. So. We don't wanna over mix. We don't wanna really um, work our meat too much because then it can be, it can get a really kind of not great texture um, with the finished product. So I'm just kind of going in here and I'm just folding. So I'm just kind of taking from the bottom, scooping from the bottom, lifting and pressing down and just going around making sure everything is really incorporated. That's really all we're looking for. So we don't want any of the pinko or onion being loose in here. Uh, in the bowl, we want it all incorporated into this meat mixture. Okay. Ta -da! Perfect. So then I'm gonna take a tablespoon and I'm gonna do a big kind of heaping tablespoon and just kind of toss it back and forth to form a little ball. It doesn't have to be perfect and we're just gonna plop it right here on our baking sheet. So I'll do another one. I've kinda got a couple big pieces of onion that I missed, so I'm just gonna put those off to the side. So you should be able to get about 15 or so. We do wanna make sure these are about the same size as much as possible, just so that they cook all evenly. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on these. Meatballs are ready, so I'm gonna pop these guys in a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes. So they're gonna be really nice and golden brown. They're gonna be bubbly and sizzly and delicious. See you soon. Our meatballs are done. I left them in a little bit too long, so they're really kind of brown, but they smell amazing. So, so good. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble our sandwiches. Um, I just took a bread knife and I like to kind of cut it all the way open. I know they're partially cut, but sometimes if you rip it, then it's all uneven and it bothers me. So I just cut it myself. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble. Um, we're gonna take some of our sauce. So this is my favorite pizza sauce. It's Di Fratelli's pizza sauce. The reason why I use a pizza sauce on this is because uh, they tend to be a little bit thicker than like a pasta sauce, and so it's not gonna run all over the place. It's gonna really stay put, which I love. Um, it's just super good. It's really flavorful. It's the perfect consistency. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread a little bit of it on the bottom of the bun. So I have this on a sheet pan, just a little sheet pan. We're gonna pop this in the oven so that the, the bread can kind of toast a little bit and the cheese can melt. Okay, so we're gonna spread that just like this, not too, too much because we're gonna put some on top of the meatballs as well, but I just kinda want it all to the corners there. Okie dokie. So now we do the meatballs. So you can squish like four meatballs on here, like so. Okay, so you're gonna have leftover meatballs, which is great. You can do whatever you want with them. You can eat them on their own. You can make some pasta, whatever you want. So I have two, four, six, seven meatballs left. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of the sauce over the top. Perfect, just the right amount. Okay, these are gonna be saucy 
and cheesy and so stinking good. Okay, now we do the cheese. We're gonna load these puppies up. You can even put some like on top of the bun here if you want to, to kind of like melt on the bun. Okay, I wanna get all of that that fell off and put it on so it's, it's not just on the tray, but it's gonna be in my mouth. Okay, ta-da, we're all ready. So we're, I'm just gonna pop these in the same preheated oven that we have, uh, 400 just until the cheese is brown and bubbly. So like five to eight minutes, I guess, depending on your oven. So just keep an eye on it um, and I'll meet you right back here. I just pulled these out of the oven. Oh my goodness, you guys, the smell is unbelievable. Okay, so we're gonna take these off. So I did five minutes and my cheese is like ooey gooey deliciousness. Okay, we're gonna put the top on. My bun is warm and toasted. And I just wanna cut through just to see how this looks. Oh my gosh, so messy. So delicious, look at that. Gooey, gooey cheese, look at the cheese. <laughs> oh my goodness, so, so beautiful. So I'll give you kind of like a side view. These are still really hot, but there is our delicious, cheesy, ooey gooey meatball sub. I hope you guys enjoy this one. It is so, so tasty. Thank you so much for being here with me. I'll see you all next time.